Hey everyone, in this video, I will be explaining you uh, in brief and to the point about amino acids, very basics of amino acids. So let me begin here. So we have 20 standard amino acids uh, in our body. So remember the number. So we have 20 standard amino acids. What is the meaning of standard amino acid? Standard. So the standard amino acid means that each of these 20 amino acids, they have got uh, codons. So they have got a genetic codon for each of these 20 standard amino acids and also standard amino acids, they are part of a polypeptide chain. Now, coming to uh, what is the basic structure of these 20 standard amino acids. So the structure of uh, amino acid goes like this. We have carbon in the center and to that carbon, so carboxyl group that is COO minus is attached and the amino group that is NH3 plus is attached and H and to the fourth valency there is a R group attached. This R group is uh, we refer it as a side chain. So we're going to look into each uh, amino acid side chain later. Now before we move on, so as I told you, so the alpha, this carbon that is present in the center is called as alpha carbon. That is why all 20 standard amino acids are referred as alpha amino acids. This is the reason why uh, these 20 standard amino acids are referred as alpha amino acids because it has got alpha carbon in the center. Now before we move on, so let's uh, uh, understand one of the concept which is related to the amino acid and that is pH pKa relation. Now, what is the meaning of pKa? So the pKa is a dis dissociation constant, dissociation constant. So dissociation constant means it is the uh, constant where the proton that is dissociated or the uh, association of a proton to a group. Like as you can see the carboxyl group here. So carboxyl group, it, uh, the carboxylic acid, generally we write it as COOH. Now uh, in the amino acid COOH, it is uh, present as COO minus. Why they, so this is a deprotonation that is COO minus plus H plus there. Uh, so it, the carboxylic group is dissociated here. So what is the reason why the carboxyl group is dissociated here? And also you can see the amino group on the left hand side here. So the amino group, uh, normally the amino group is NH2, but here NH, it is NH3 plus. So that means one proton is, um, there is a protonation going on here. So that means your carboxyl group has underwent deprotonation, whereas your amino group has underwent protonation. What is the reason for deprotonation of a carboxyl group and protonation of an amino group? In order to understand this, so we need to know the relationship between uh, pH and pKa. So I wanted to show you one thing, so I forgot. So the carboxyl group that is attached to the alpha carbon here, so this carboxyl group, we refer it as a primary carboxyl group, primary, primary carboxylic group. So the primary carboxylic group is the one that is attached to the alpha carbon and the amino group that is attached to the alpha carbon, this amino group here, it is called as primary amino group. That means each amino acid has got primary carboxyl group and primary amino group and this primary carboxyl and primary amino group uh, in an individual protein which is an isolated one so they are free they are not going to interact with uh, any other side groups or side chain here and they are free so the primary carboxyl group and the primary so each amino acid has a primary carboxyl group primary amino group there is an exception so i'm going to come to that point uh, later the previous uh, picture so the amino acid in the general structure primary carboxyl group is always deprotonated and primary amino group is protonated. So this is what is all about uh, pH-PK relation. So I hope you understood uh, pH-PK relation. Let's understand what is the relationship between uh, pH and pK. So pH-PKA relationship. So if you understand pH-PK relationship, so it will help you to understand why the primary carboxyl group is uh, deprotonated and why the amino group uh, is uh, protonated. So before we uh, move on further, so I, I 
anyway so let's understand ph pk relationship now so uh, in order to understand ph pk relationship we need to remember uh, three facts because there are, it's a you big concept ph pk relationship let's not go into too much details of it but i'm going to highlight here uh, three points with uh, ph and pk remember these three facts here so whenever uh, ph is uh, less than pk as you know ph is the negative logarithm of h plus ion so basically it indicates h plus ion concentration in a solution so if the ph is less so there will be more h plus ion in a solution so whenever ph is less than pk the group whichever the group that you are referring to that group will undergo protonation that means proton will be added to the group that's what happens whenever ph is less than pk remember there will be protonation of the group protonation happens now whenever second point here whenever ph is more than pka that means whenever the h plus ion concentration is less in the solution in relation to the group so whenever ph is less than pka so the group will undergo deprotonation group undergoes deprotonation so you got to remember that one and the third point here is uh, whenever ph equals to pka whenever ph is equals to pka that means 50% uh, of the group will be protonated protonation 50% protonation and rest 50% of the group will be in deprotonation deprotonation so it is 50 50 so if you take example of carboxylic group 50% of the carboxyl group 50% of the carboxyl group will be present as COOH and rest 50% of the carboxyl group will be present as COO minus that's what it means say uh, if you take say 100 amino acids uh, in that uh, 100, uh, out 50 carboxyl groups will be COOH 50 carboxyl group will be COO minus just an example so uh, these are the three facts that you need to remember so ph less than pka remember there is a uh, protonation whenever ph is more than pka remember there is deprotonation when ph is equals to pka it's a uh, 50% protonation and 50% deprotonation anyway so now let's uh, see from ship want to uh, see further uh, what is the ph pk relation in uh, amino acid so we have alpha carbon in the center we have coo minus that's a primary carboxyl group we have nh3 plus that is primary amino group we have h and we have r that's a side group now uh, you need to know the pka of primary carboxyl group pka of primary carboxyl group is approximately 2 okay so if we need to compare this with the normal blood ph so as you know normal blood ph blood ph is uh, 7.4 so our ph is 7.4 ph is 7.4 and now our pka our pka is this one pka of primary carboxyl group pka pka is 2 now put that equation so what is the ph pk relation now so the ph is 7.4 and pka is 2 that means ph is more than pka so the we are going with the previous slide whenever ph is more than pka so the group will undergo deprotonation that's why as you can see the carboxylic group previously it was a cooh carboxylic group so it has now underwent deprotonation that became coo minus and h plus so the COOH is deprotonated into COO minus plus H plus. That's why in an amino acid, especially under physiological pH 7.4, your primary carboxyl group is deprotonated because pH is more than pKa. So now let's move on to see what is the relation uh, ship of pH pKa with the uh, primary amino group this is one is primary amino group so as you can see primary amino group has underwent protonation what is the reason for protonation here 
so in order to understand the reason for protonation we need to know so what is the ph pk relation here uh, for your uh, primary amino group so the ph pk for primary amino group is approximately 9.5 that's the pk for, for primary amino group you know the ph for uh, ph of your blood we have already seen that is 7.4 now let's put the pk here pk is 9.5 that's the 9.5 for amino group so uh, replace that value pk is 9.5 ph is 7.4 so going by the relation so it is ph less than pk as you know from the previous slide so whenever ph is less than pk there will be protonation protonation so that is why amino group will undergo protonation so previously it was say nh2 now that nh2 has became nh3 plus that's why in an amino acid whenever it is present in isolated form so the primary carboxyl group will undergo deprotonation and the primary amino group will undergo protonation 99% of, of the time, time so the so primary the carboxyl group will be deprotonated and primary amino group will be protonated so this is what is the phpk relationship here and that's why yeah so make sure you know why primary carboxyl group is deprotonated why primary amino group is protonated it's all about that so we uh, and also note that see our group I have not uh, touched upon R groups. R group has a different uh, structure. Each amino acid has got different R groups. And each R groups also will have their own PKA. So I'm not going to go into details of all the R groups PKAs as I go into you know, individual amino acids in my next video. Uh, but I will be uh, explaining you about the importance of R groups in relation to its PKA for one of the amino acid, uh, histidine. Histidine, it is, it is having a physiological buffer function. That's why I will go into uh, PKFR group and then I will explain you how the PKFR groups can actually uh, influence uh, uh, the special characteristic of uh, an amino acid. So I hope you understood PHPK relation in this uh, brief video, which is a very basic information that you need to know. So once you have this information, once you know the basic structure of an amino acid, it will help you to understand uh, individual amino acids in my next video. So please uh, keep watching my next video so that uh, there will be continuity about understanding of amino acids. Uh, I will meet you in my next video.